So this lecture is going to focus on evaluation of lung ultrasound in the critically ill patient for pneumonia and other consolidations. So as discussed in previous lectures, remember in lung ultrasound there are a lot of different signs and lines and eventually we're going to use all these to kind of evaluate the acutely respiratory failing patient with either hypoxia or hypotension. Um, these are the other things that we can find and again we're focusing on alveolar consolidations here. So what are the questions that we're asking? Remember, in this scenario, this is just part of the evaluation of a hypoxia problem-based assessment. Uh, most of the time I use pneumonia evaluation is for patients who are uh, having, um, I, I find it in patients who are severely hypoxic for other reasons, and I'm trying to figure out why the patient may be hypoxic, or and then I put together the clinical case of the patient, for instance, if they have fever or increased white blood cell count, I tend to use this as a supplemental supplementary tool. So in pneumonia, we have a few focus questions. First, is there a tissue-like or shred sign? And I'll show you good images of both of these. Um, second, do I see beelines without lung sliding? The probe you're going to use is either the cardiac or the abdomen probe. <clears throat> Typically, I use the abdomen presets, but some of these newer machines actually have lung preset, which also allow you to be able to see all the uh, appropriate structures. Remember, most alveolar consolidations touch the chest wall in nearly all acute conditions. Uh, the problem with pneumonia is it could be in uh, quite a large number of locations, and so it may be uh, difficult to find the exact spot. Although most of the time when we're doing these exams, we're looking in the lateral and posterior regions. In order to remember the slide we showed in the basic lung, there are anterior lung exams, there are lateral lung exams, and there's posterior zone lung exams. Most of the time we're going to be using lateral zone and posterior zone for these exams. The PLAPS point is the point that we, we talked about using. It's the posterior and or lateral alveolar pleural syndrome. Um, it's the intersection in the posterior axillary line. What I like to say is I actually, I actually look for pneumonias in, in the mid-axillary line as well as the posterior. In the ICU sometimes it's difficult is difficult to uh, get the posterior aspect of the patient if they're supine, if they've had surgeries and a lot of wounds, uh, or if they're obese. Uh, so most of the time you will actually see fairly good lung on the axillary aspect, similar to where you're looking for pleural effusions. Again, we're addressing stage two and stage three uh, parts of the lung exam, which is the lateral wall and then the ex uh, external part of the posterior wall. <clears throat> this is just another slide showing you um, where we're looking. Uh, you can see here the ultrasound probe is kind of pointed in the back region. So to discuss the few signs, um, a tissue-like sign, if you look right here on the bottom, is where the lung essentially looks like tissue. It looks like echogenetic it looks like a uh, liver and which is called hepatization or tissue-like sign. Now that actually indicates consolidation. If you see, if you, if you see the tissue-like sign and uh, you do not see air bronchograms inside, then sometimes uh, you can actually uh, uh, say that it's just consolidation, not pneumonia. A shred sign, for instance, on the top right, almost always indicates some form of pneumonia or severe consolidation. The consolidation uh, may be an early pneumonia or uh, other fi uh, fibrosis type diseases, but usually when you see uh, irregular borders, uh, that indicates uh, early pneumonia process. Just like uh, other forms, if you see air bronchograms within the tissue, that, uh, they can be either punctate or linear. You can see the bottom here is linear. These are little punctate, and I'm going to show you some real clips of this, but this would indicate either early pneumonia or a pneumonia process. Now again, you have to look at the clinical process and the clinical um, that takes place with it. So for example here, you can see uh, you can see where the arrow is pointing. You can see air bronchograms.
you can see the air moving inside. And this is actually in the left, right upper chest. This is actually the lung. Again, you can see plankton sign, which is visualization within the tissue-like image of slow whirling movements. So for instance, right here, you see the left lung. And up here in this little area, you may see slow whirling movements. And that would indicate uh, hyperechoic structures and could correspond to gas. Uh, you can also see honeycombing, which sometimes indicates effusions. Uh, also, when looking at pleural effusions, you can see really thick effusions uh, that almost look similar to the lung, and this can indicate some forms of pneumonia, especially if you have shred sign. You can actually sometimes see ghost images, and I want to make sure that's clear. When you have a bright echogenic structure like this, you can actually have uh, mirroring, which is, this is the spleen on this side, you can actually have mirroring right there, and that sometimes shows... Um, uh, can be confused with consolidation. One way to get rid of it is by moving your ultrasound probe left or right, and that sometimes helps uh, remove the imaging. So the next couple of slides I'm going to show you are just various images of pneumonias that we've seen. Um, so these are per punctate air bronchograms with an effusion. So you can see this is a large pleural effusion because you have actually fluid down here as well as up here. Uh, this is actually the lung. <clears throat> this is the diaphragm. This is the liver or spleen. And within the consolidated lung, you can actually see these bright hyperechoic structures. <clears throat> Those are punctate air bronchograms and can indicate early pneumonia. <clears throat> it, as opposed to this structure, there's no obvious air bronchograms here. Again, you see a, a moderate pleural effusion here. You see a diaphragm. And if you look closely at the lung, you, it really just looks kind of like a liver or hepatization or what we want to call a tissue-like sign. So this actually just indicates atelectasis or consolidated lung. Another thing uh, that people fail to see is irregular borders. So this is actually a zoom in of the pleura. And if you remember from our basic lecture, the pleura is usually supposed to be a nice white hyperechoic line. In this case, you can see it's an irregular border. This is actually called a C profile. When you see a C profile, that actually can indicate similar to a pneumonia in that particular area of the lung. Uh, I have actually also seen this with pulmonary contusions and pleural-based masses. So it, can't, it doesn't always equal pneumonia, but it can lead you towards that diagnosis. Here's another picture of punctate air bronchograms. So <clears throat> here you have a diaphragm, a liver or spleen. It looks like we're on the liver side. <clears throat> you can see a pleural effusion. And if you look at the lung, you can see all these white air bronchograms, and most of them are punctate. Now, we don't see any dynamic air bronchograms, as, as I showed you earlier, with them moving with the ventilator. But you can definitely say if this patient had an increased white blood cell count and a fever or you were concerned about pneumonia, that this may be a developing pneumonia, and that you may want to either drain for a sample or uh, start antibiotics. <laughs> So this is just a picture. Here you can see um, this is actually a small pleural effusion. I thought it was interesting because you can see the lung sliding. And actually part of, part of the lung has actually become early pleural fluid buildup. I have seen this in pulmonary contusions. Here's a picture of an abscess within a lung. So here you see a diaphragm, liver, the lung, pleural fluid, and then you see the space within the lung. That's actually uh, abscess inside a lung or loculated effusion. Here's a picture of a really good shred sign. So you see a pleural fluid, and you see that this lung is an irregular border, as opposed to the previous ones I showed you that have clean, nice borders. So if you saw this, and again, the appropriate clinical setting, you may consider that the patient has pneumonia. Here's a patient with fibrin strand. We see this very frequently too. It doesn't does not necessarily indicate a pneumonia, but it is important for you to be able to know that you ha you can sometimes see these. Uh, sometimes with these fibrin strands, they may be early loculations, loculations of fluid. So if you do put a chest tube in, you may still have some fluid remaining if you have a large amount of these fibrin strands. 
All right, so to end the lecture, remember <clears throat> pneumonia, there are a couple of focus questions. Is there tissue-like sign or shred sign? And do I see bee lines without lung sliding? Uh, <clears throat> I didn't mention the, the lung sliding part as much. So there are some times where you find uh, <clears throat> bee lines on one side of the chest, either the left or right, and they have, do not have lung sliding. Again, in the same appropriate clinical context, this may be a sign of an early pneumonia or an early aspiration. Uh, if you have a bilateral, that would suggest a little bit more of a process like ARDS or pulmonary fibrosis. But when you have unilateral B lines that do not have lung sliding, that indicates possible pneumonia. All right, thanks a lot.